Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, I picked an interesting topic for today because I've gotten some inquiries about it and so I thought I would check it out so I could give you some accurate information and it's called Kratom. Uh, it's an herbal supplement that is available over the counter in most places in the United States, at least for the time being. And it's made from the leaves of a plant that's indigenous to Southeast Asia. It's been historically used as both a stimulant and a depressant. And so at low doses, like less than five grams, it works as a stimulant. And then if you take it at higher doses, it has a depressant and analgesic effect, similar to the effect of opioid drugs. It's available in powder form, in capsules, liquid, and sometimes infused into chocolate. I'm sure I would like the chocolate variety if I were going to use this stuff, but I won't. Um, it's currently used for pain relief to treat mood disorders like depression and as an alternative to methadone and other drugs used to treat people who've become addicted to opioids. It's represented as being a safe treatment for relieving symptoms of opioid withdrawal, but there really isn't any evidence to support this at all. The active component of kratom is mitrogenine, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which acts on opioid receptors, which means that there is the potential for users of this product to become addicted. Another alkaloid called hydroxymitrogenine is thought by some to be more potent than methadone. And then there's a synthetic version of this particular uh, ingredient in this plant. Um, that sometimes is put into fortified kratom, which has been shown to be 13 times more powerful than morphine. So depending upon the actual kratom product that you, could, that you buy, um, it can be pretty powerful stuff. So essentially, the use of kratom produces a legal high. It's currently available in all but a few states, um, and, um, and I think we should all be concerned about this for reasons I've already stated. While having drug-like effects, it's not regulated as a drug. And I found online a review of um, that was done by or the, a review of the United States Natural po Nat National Poison Control Data System, along with a retrospective review of kratom-associated fatalities. You heard that right, identified by a county medical examiner's office. And I found the findings of this little investigation kind of disturbing. Reported adverse effects from kratom in this um, review included agitation, tachycardia, drowsiness, vomiting, confusion, hallucinations, respiratory depression, coma, respiratory arrest, liver damage, renal failure, and cardiac arrest. Four deaths were reported with the cause of death as ide um, identified as kratom only in two out of the four and the other two deaths were kratom associated with the use of other drugs at the same time. Now, I think by anybody's definition, somebody, uh, a product that causes these kinds of side effects and even deaths should probably not be available over the counter to anybody who wants to walk into a store and buy it. In 2018, there were two reports of newborn babies experiencing withdrawal symptoms because their mothers had used this product, kratom, during pregnancy. In one case report published in Pediatrics, 33 hours after birth, a little baby boy showed symptoms similar to those associated with opiate withdrawal, uh, such as sneezing, jitteriness, excessive suck, irritability, and scratching of the skin. The child was successfully treated with morphine and a blood pressure drug and released from the ICU, but um, again, this, this herbal supplement seems an awful lot like an opioid drug. The Drug Enforcement Agency tried to ban kratom nationally in 2016, but advocates who believed in the efficacy of kratom for helping people who are addicted to opioids were successful in blocking the agency's efforts to take this product off the market. It appears that belief in the product is misplaced. I found a study of 136 kratom users in Malaysia that showed that while the product was effective for reducing the use of opioids, none of the people who took the product in order to stop using opioids were able to successfully withdraw themselves from kratom after they did that. So essentially, they exchanged one um, addictive substance for another, which is akin to rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. In February 2018, the FDA classified the active compounds in kratom as opioids, but the product again continues to be sold over the counter. Um, there's a kratom retailer near me, and so I decided to check out their, life site, their uh, website. It's called Life of Kratom. The store's website features a petition to save kratom in Ohio because the uh, Ohio State Board of Pharmacy has proposed placing it on the scheduled controlled substance uh, list, um, the same category that is reserved for, for opioids. 
the sites, the site says that, well, we need more research and safety and efficacy aren't yet clear, but it might not be advisable to, and this is the quote from the website, outlaw an organic substance that has helped hundreds of thousands of Americans struggling from addiction and force them to endure the pain and or addiction that led them to take solace in the kratom leaf in the first place. Well, the data that I just reviewed and reported to you clearly makes that a false statement. Nobody is successfully withdrawing from opioids and then getting off of kratom. It's not being used as like a transitional product based on the study in Malaysia. And I know of at least one person here in central Ohio who has taken the product and is having a heck of a time withdrawing from it. Another retailer posted some information on its website. It's on the other side of town. And um, it had to do with um, Kratom products being natural and not, not adulterated. It says, yes, our Kratom products are 100% all natural and without any additives. There are popular companies which sell enhanced Kratom, but we don't take part in any form of extracts or enhanced Kratom. This is the worst way to offend the Kratom community and the quickest way to get Kratom banned. I think Kratom being banned is going to happen because it's an addictive substance, not because of what this group is talking about. All of our Kratom is lab, te lab tested, although I couldn't find any results of any lab testing on this website. If your supplier can't answer yes, when asked if their Kratom has been lab tested, please stop, uh, please shop anywhere else. Please don't be tricked by your local head shop either if you don't shop with us. You never know what you're getting or how long that Kratom has been sitting on the shelf. Um, that should concern us all. The site also includes some very disturbing, I think, reassurances that concerns from the state of Ohio and the DEA and other regulatory agencies is actually misplaced because Kratom is safe. There were no references to support this statement. I was kind of shocked because they have an online store to find out that this stuff sells for as much as $160 a pound. It's not inexpensive. Now, I want to give the other side of the story. Advocates of products like Kratom, and specifically of Kratom, are, are correct in stating that adverse events and deaths from opioid drugs are thousands of times higher than those resulting from Kratom use. But this argument that use this because it hurts you less than something else doesn't really fly with me because the purpose of healthcare is not to come up with something that hurts people less. It's to come up with something that helps people more, that helps them regain their health. And this product clearly doesn't meet that, um, uh, that criteria. And, um, and it, there's a lot of evidence showing that it's potentially addictive and harmful. Um, those of you who listen to me all the time know that I'm not a fan of a lot of regulation, but in this case I think more is needed because of the misrepresentations that are being made. Um, in other words, if, if warning signs, you know, if you, you can still buy cigarettes in the United States, but you got to look at that warning sign on the, on the uh, cigarette pack that you know, the Surgeon General has determined that smoking increases your risk of lung cancer, and cigarette companies are really not able to advertise their products at will like they used to. They can't buy television ads and that sort of thing. So um, even assuming we were going to leave this product on the market, I think that there should be appropriate warnings and informed consent type um, uh, uh, safety nets in place that keep people from being misled. My guess is that a lot of people who are looking at websites like the two that I looked at are thinking that this is okay to do and relatively safe and it's herbal and it's natural and a uh, natural argument doesn't fly with me either. Poison ivy is natural, but I don't think I'm going to go lie in it this afternoon. So that's, that's not a reason for using it. So lots of reasons to be cautious. And in case anybody out there is thinking that this is a good alternative either for you or for an addicted family member, think again. Not so much, actually. All right. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you next week with more news.